because we have a very short time to cover a fairly complex subject. But I've basically worked uh, the image of Marbella from the 80s until fairly recently as all the promotional material has been basically mine. I did all the work for Zagaleta, La Quinta, Los Arqueros since they started moving Earth back to Zagaleta when it still belonged to Khashoggi. Uh, I've worked worldwide for large multinational companies covering their building launches, uh, hotel chain launches, um, you know, everything from an, a local interior director, decorator opening a shop to large chains. So that's my qualifications. We're not going to go on much more about that. What I really would like to do is um, see what that screen is. Sorry, one second. We've gone blank. Oh, okay, we're on the video, which is fine. Okay. We'll go on to the video and see if it starts. The machine's running a little slow today. There it goes. I'm going to give you a one minute sampler of my work, which says a lot more about me than what I can tell you. Basically, what I do is I make any place, product, or moment, I enhance its beauty property, your clients are scrolling by looking at one after another and after another, and you need something that's going to make them stop and look at yours, and hopefully you're going to make them stay and, and purchase. So that's what I'm going to, here to help you work out today. Is it stuck? I don't think, it, uh, no? I think with the internet here we're having challenges, oh so okay. I hope you can... <laughs> Property owner's photography options are as follows. Number one, do-it-yourself homemade photography. Two, do-it-yourself homemade photography with love and care using my tips. Three, optionally outsource the post-production, get someone to do your file processing. Four, commission basic photography services, leave it to a pro. Five, commission specialized property photography, true return on investment. Six, consider 360 degree photos or other virtual tour options. Seven, consider adding video production, video or vertical reel. And eight, photo usage license. Make sure the one you have fits your needs. Obviously it's gonna be more expensive to get somebody who's specialized than just anybody who knows how to take a photo, but there's definitely a return on investment that you're gonna get because your images are gonna be more successful. Very quickly, other things that you need to consider are gonna be, do you wanna do 360 degree photos or virtual tours of any sort? We're not gonna get into that today. We don't have time, but you need to keep it in mind. And are you going to take any kind of videography? How are we doing on that? No, I said, yeah, fantastic. Okay, that's all right. We'll keep rolling ahead and we'll, we'll show the samples later. Um, so let's keep talking about things that don't need the visual so much. Other things to keep in mind are styling. Now, because we're rental property, I'm going to tell you that you probably need to be very cautious with the styling concept. Why? I once photographed a hotel, won't say names. They gave us a silver cutlery on a breakfast tray for the breakfast photo in the bed. And I later heard that, I don't know if they were even sued by a client because they didn't have silver cutlery provided to them. I certainly know of hotels who have put flowers in the rooms, no flower in the room. The clients, some clients are going to take advantage of anything that's wrong or could be wrong to ask you for a discount or something special or something extra, or they may just be unhappy and complain and you need to do something. So be very careful what you add in styling. Try to stick to things that really are there or things that the client might easily buy or maybe you provide a bowl of fruit as a, for a VIP guest or something. Stick to those. But it does help add a lot of atmosphere to what is otherwise an empty cold space. Okay? So let's uh, go on to preparations for the photography day. Let's see if I remember all the things I put on my list. Um, obviously, the first thing you want to do if you have, for example, a villa with a garden or even an apartment that has communal gardens, if you have the luxury, try to do it at the best time of year. What's the best time of year? It's probably going to be spring, early summer, before the sun blasts the grass, before it's too crowded, certainly not in the winter when the gardens are pruned back and the grass is, is, looks like it's dead. So if you have the luxury of planning, try the pictures now and then update them when you get to spring with nice, beautiful gardens. Second thing is try to choose the best time of day to show off the house. The problem, there's a lot of, taking a good picture can be really easy, okay? A landscape, a, a portrait, you can put the camera on automatic and you're, you know, even if you don't know what you're doing, you're eventually gonna get lucky and take a good picture. Taking pictures of real estate, of architecture, especially interiors where you have a darker room and a very bright view outside, which is what we are selling. We are selling life in Marbella. 
This is your room, you're sitting here, you're looking out at the sea, you're looking out at the beach, the pool, whatever. Because cameras cannot yet capture, they will get there, cameras cannot yet capture the vast difference between the dim interior light and the bright sunny exterior. Okay, so I'm going to show you very quickly how you can sort of do that automatically on the iPhone and very quickly, because we don't have a lot of time, you know, how you would do it if you're taking it with a real camera trying to do something more professional. Um, other things to prepare. Now, for prep considerations, number one, shoot in the season that property looks its best, for example, the lawn. Two, take advantage of the best times of day and or twilight. Three, postpone if the weather is not appropriate or stable enough for your shoot. Four, have the property fully cleaned, set up, and styled on shoot day. Five, remove clutter, personal items, anything unnecessary. Six, check every light, hide cables, straighten lampshades. Seven, ensure the pool's crisp and clean. Turn off the pool pump so the water's still. And eight, don't mow the lawn before the shoot and don't hose down the exteriors. The lawn doesn't look great the day it's mowed and the puddles may not dry. Please, you know, when the photographer comes, whether it's a hundred or a thousand or whatever it is, you're paying money. Don't make the photographer stop to start having to remove your, your photo frames, uh, uh, cables, that, uh, the lamps that are strewn all over the floor, have all the rechas open, have your curtains lined up nicely, have your beds made, try to get rid of the wrinkles. There's a lot of things that go into making a house look nice. A lot of things can be retouched. That's extra work. Some things are easy to retouch, some things are very complicated. So everything, you, you should literally think of your house as a, as a showroom and prepare it for the day of the session so when the photographer comes, he has to spend the least amount of time possible. Ideally, I would turn the pool pump off because when the water is still, if you're lucky enough to, not to have a, a, a day without wind, you'll get a nice reflection of the house in the pool or the garden. And you can, photographers also choose to move the water on time when they want it to create patterns in the water, but just when they need it. So it's best to just turn it off for the day. That pretty much covers preparations of the house. Do we have him? <laughs> we, we are almost there? Great. So it's fairly complex. There's very few people who are going to take pictures with their own cameras. We're going to cover everything a little bit. But even if these things aren't applying to your own particular needs, they're good for you to hear because you kind of get an idea what to expect that the photographer is looking for and what to demand of the photographer when he gets there. Fantastic. We'll skip the video, okay? Because I know we have very limited time. No, no, no. You don't there. We're okay? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, let's go back and just give you a little sampler then. I think I need to press it again to start the video. No? There you go. Here, let, let me let you start the video and then I'll take it from there. Fantastic. Great. So now that we've covered a lot of what I was going to talk about while this in, I'll just kind of tell you where these are. This is the Dubai H Hotel. This is uh, the National Acoustics Building in Sydney. Back to the H Hotel. Film set in Los Angeles. Castle in uh, the UK. Back to Dubai. Still in Dubai. Um, it was a very interesting shoot because it was supposed to be just the 14 iconic photographs of each hotel. It was a very low budget, quick shoot, and the, the models were going to be background. All of a sudden when I got there, it was like, the models are going to be foreground. We had to readjust the whole concept. Uh, the important thing is adaptability. Adaptability and um, you know, doing everything with a smile and passion all the time, which is why I have clients who have been calling me for decades now. No matter what they know that when we get there, no matter what the circumstances are, the ground are we're going to pull off a good job. And that's my blurb about me as a professional. I'm going to show you now two samples. The first one is actually not a rental property. I just put these on my social media, so I had them handy to add here. They're just one minute each. This one was actually a property for sale, but I'm going to throw it in because we had a very limited budget. And I said, this house is going to look good at the crack of dawn. We're going to have beautiful light. It's going to come streaming into the house. It's going to make it really easy for me to shoot. And then I'm going to come back just at twilight because we're gonna show off the house in the daytime, we're gonna show off the house at twilight when it glows and it's glamorous, and guess what? It's really easy because at the right moment, the outside light, the views, balance with the inside light. So we don't have to worry about the contrast between the inside and the outside, as you can see. So that's why I wanted to show this one off. Where is it? Sorry? Where is this? That's in Monte Mayor, 
Here in Spain. Here in Spain, yeah. Wow. Okay. This is a, a, a rental client of mine who has been working with me for years and years and years. She really understands the return on investment and putting a bit of money into uh, the projects with me. Um, yeah, this is one property that we covered, I think, in a half a day. It took us about 15 times to get the day. It kept clouding over the day we were planning on doing it. That's one of the things I did talk about in the preparations, is consider postponing if the weather isn't right, or if it is right, but you have a suspicion that it's gonna cloud over and start raining at the middle of the day, don't set everything up. Don't set up the photographer and everything else. Let's keep rolling, folks. Uh, You've yeah. about halfway when you says, okay. That's okay, we'll skip past that. It, it doesn't really. We had a very limited budget, and I said, this house is gonna look good at the crack of dawn. We're gonna have beautiful light, it's gonna come streaming into the house, it's gonna make it really easy for me to shoot, and then I'm gonna come back just at twilight, because we're gonna show off the house in the daytime, we're gonna show off the house at twilight when it glows and it's glamorous, and guess what, it's really easy, because at the right moment, the outside light, the views, balance with the inside light. So we don't have to worry about the contrast between the inside and the outside, as you can see, samples of, we're gonna talk about angles, how to make, how to get easy interior photos that look nice, which is not hard. Then we'll discuss light. We can actually proud of this picture. You're supposed to laugh now. I'm proud of this picture because I found it. Because I found it. It's really hard for me to find a picture to show you how to take it wrong. Because I never do it. Okay. So the other day I went, oh yeah, I did this really fast. I took it wrong. This is what happens when you point your camera up or down the tiniest amount. Now, okay, that's what it should look like as far as I'm concerned. Now this is when it works when you want to create an effect by pointing down the stair, but this is working because I'm very carefully, look at how these horizontal lines are perfectly straight, okay? So even though I'm losing my vertical, my horizontal is there giving it a grounding. And this is pointing upwards from a recent visit to New York. That's sort of the pyramid effect at the Rock Miller Center as the building is doing that. So sometimes you can use these to great effect, but most of the time if you're selling your home, you don't want to do that. So how are we gonna take and we really have to simplify a good picture of a room or a facade. You're basically gonna shoot perpendicularly. In other words, if we're, imagine that we're looking down bird's eye view at a rectangular room, okay? I'm gonna be standing with the camera here pointing right at the center, not here, right at the center. Or I'm gonna be standing over there or over here pointing exactly straight at the other center. And I'm gonna be in the middle of the room. What's that going to do? That's gonna set me in the center and the distortion, okay, we're getting, we don't have the divergence because we're holding it level, but also the distortion that is going to happen with a wide angle lens is gonna be balanced equally on one side and the other. It's gonna distort the same way both ways and that makes it look solid and inviting and symmetrical. So we're gonna see that. I'm exactly set up in the middle here. You can see the line. Now houses aren't always perfectly lined up. You're gonna start discovering that your houses are not built straight. Okay, so you're gonna to have to fudge it and try to move into a position where visually it works because they're not always straight. But here we've got the light bulb going through the sofa area down to the thing. Okay, and you can see that this line is distorting exactly at the same angle. Close enough. On both sides, that makes it look good. Okay, now here's another room. The center, I'm shooting through the doorway to get back far enough with a really wide lens. This isn't centered, but I use it as the center and the lines, look at the distortion that's happening on the tiles. It's, we're creating a fugue, a fugue uh, sensation there, but it's balanced equally on both sides. So again, it looks good. Now these, because of the spatial, and tell me if I'm going too fast, okay? Because I'm gonna be throwing out a lot of info at you guys today, so slow me down if I go too fast, but we don't have much of a choice. The spatial distortion is still here. So what you can do in these circumstances is maybe cut off the first two rows that are most obvious, you're always gonna have the most obvious distortion at the extremes. You can cut those off to get rid of some of that distortion effect. This is what happens when you shoot diagonally. Look at the arch, that's not, a, that's not a curved arch, that's a stretched arch. If I did that, look at how much nicer those look. But obviously, I get a different angle on the room. It, just because the floor tiles are laid down that way doesn't mean I wanna show the room that way. So if we go back to that angle, we get this ugly distortion happening here. You see d different distortions here and there. So we can crop the bottom and top to try to reduce that a bit, okay? Diagonals are always gonna look more distorted with wide angle lenses than straight shots center to center. I'm gonna show you quickly here. This spa, okay, that was my center. 
and look at how all the different lines all kind of match each other, okay? So these are examples of how to make your place look nice. Really simple, stay in the center, point it to the center. Center, but you take certain objects and make them your center. Look at how it went through the center of the table, the center of the TV, and it gives it a solid sensation. Now we're gonna move on to the diagonals. We've already seen center to center, but you're gonna do the same thing with your diagonal. Again, these are rules, feel free to break them. Every room is different, the furniture is different, but it's a good grounding for you. If you stand in the corner, and usually you're gonna be standing the furthest back possible because you're trying to get everything in, okay? So you're probably gonna be in the corner, in the closet, through the doorway. In fact, the people joke about me coming out of the closet, but that, that, that was a stylist who said that. Okay, we'll talk about the stylist later. Okay, so let's look at some practical examples. Let's say we're in this living room, and I want to show from the, the view from here to there. I'm going to be pointing exactly that way. Now, the first one isn't the living room, but I wanted to show it to you because it's a perfect example. Again, the distortion is being equal in all directions. It feels solid. This is starting to get ugly up here, so you might want to crop that off to try to avoid that. There's nothing you can do about the spatial distortion. Again, I'm using the table point as my center. It still looks good. This living room, I'm not center. You know, you can play with this. Uh, diagonally, trying to go corner into corner, okay? To give it equal distortion. That's your goal, that's your aim. Okay, let's move on to the next major, major, major difficulty. We have to deal with light. This is what I was talking about before. Uh, you know, some of these examples are just because they're not the best examples, but they illustrate what I'm trying to get across. This is basically what you get if you're inside and take a normal picture. The camera sensor, used to be filmed, now the sensor can't see what our eye's brain can see. It doesn't have the range, so the outside burns. You are not showing the beautiful exterior to the person who wants to come spend time in Marbella. Okay, you're not communicating that. Now in this case, I lit it with flash, which took me like two hours and five flashes to do. Nowadays, you would blend different exposures to get basically the same look. Inside and outside would be balanced. And your other alternative is to wait until twilight. As I mentioned before, you wait, you wait, you wait, literally till five, 10 minutes before the sky is tied. It will eventually balance out and you can take, okay, you can't see necessarily uh, you can see the sea, you can see the sky. If there was a lit pool, you'd see the lit pool. So you don't see the grass, maybe, but you see the exterior. Am I going too fast for everybody? Even or not, these lights give a yellow color, okay? They're not like sunlight. Even sunlight is different when it's a bright day or a cloudy day. It's a different color, not just contrast and intensity. So cameras nowadays, will, if you go into one scene, a nighttime scene, will adjust for the nighttime lighting. Let's not talk about different color light bulbs in the same space. <laughs> We're not going to go there. Okay, but it will adjust. What's going to happen? Do you do it in the daytime? If you've got warm sunlight coming in and orange lights, it's going to fix one or the other or be somewhere in between and it's going to look ugly. So I personally recommend turning off all interior lights in the daytime unless they're really important. That starts getting tricky. So since we're not pro photographers, let's try to avoid that. Okay, so this is the Butchner Clinic when they launched their new wing. This is what you would have got just taking a normal shot. This is more or less what I achieved. Again, not necessarily the best examples, but I have them handy to show you. So this is how I get that without flashes. This is what you're gonna do. For those of you with cameras, don't spend money on flashes. It's a whole nother complication, lots of money. Get a tripod. You can get a tri cheap tripod. I don't have time to tell you everything. We have about five minutes. Five minutes, wow, okay, we're gonna go faster then. I don't have time to tell you everything, but you're gonna go onto a tripod, and the only thing you're going to change to make it darker and brighter is the shutter speed. Do not change your lens aperture. Do not change your ISO, which degrades the image if you can avoid it. Only change the speed. Have it on a tripod. Take the picture for the darkest area to make it look bright. That easy, but you can at least do that. Now, here's another thing I forgot to say because I didn't have my things. You can outsource your file processing. There are people here who you can turn to who are true pros. You have a lot of choices where you can take the pictures and then turn to somebody else to process them for you, okay? Uh, now, here we get to the iPhone people or the smartphone people. This is a shot I did at that house that was for sale with the real camera and I processed it and put the bright and dark together. This is what my iPhone did. Another one of the rooms. My iPhone did this. Why did it do it? Because the smartphones now have 
intelligent processing built into it. So it's basically creating an HDR for me. Now, don't say, oh, that's great, I don't have to listen to this anymore. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work all the time. It works really good in a small, bright room with a nice view, but it's not always going to work for you. Like, this is a bigger room with more dark space inside. This would be the shot without HDR, more or less. This is the shot with HDR. It kind of does it. You know, and I pushed this a bit to try to make it work. It kind of does it, but it doesn't do it perfectly. So that's what you can do with your iPhones, and here is how. I'm going to use the iPhone example because that's what I have. You go to the photos, you go to edit. When you come into the edit options, click on auto. Auto is automatically probably going to make your picture look brighter. The most important thing you're going to go to is your shadows and lift it up. Not until it becomes too fake, but lift up your shadows to brighten the inside and then play with those dials a bit. And just very quickly, if you didn't hold the camera perfectly straight up or down, or you were a little offside, if you go into crop, you have the option to rotate, to correct your vertical divergence, and your horizontal divergence. So you can play with it to make your picture look better afterwards. Okay, we're moving on to good and bad light. We're doing okay, we're gonna be okay. <laughs> Try to use a day with good light. To me, this is, you know, a lot of people say, you're not coming today. I said, no, we're not coming today. You want Chasan results, you're investing in me. I, my palette is not available today. For me, I had to go shoot this in the countryside, an hour drive, it was a sh shitty day to photograph. There's no electric light, there's no electric blue sky. Look at the difference between that and that. This was a good, crisp day, strong light and beautiful clouds in the sky. That's gonna sell better than this. So if you start off with bad material, you're gonna get bad material, okay? Now, of course, nowadays with Photoshop, we can do a lot of things. Again, I'll go a little bit fast. There's a lot of anecdotes. Had to shoot this house this day for the construction company. Eventually got used for the real estate selling this 8 million euro whatever house. The start of the day was terrible, and I wanted to cancel. There was no way of canceling or postponing. Fortunately, it cleared up later. We were able to get a better shot when the sky cleared wow. up and we had better light. And these are the night versions a little earlier, a little later. Once the sky goes totally black, Anything that's not lit disappears. And to me, it becomes gloomy, tetrico, like they say in Spanish. So try to do it in the last five or 10 minutes when there's still color in the sky to get the effect. So very quickly, I keep saying, I'm, the amount of time I'm saying very quickly, I can say a lot of other things. Okay, very quickly, scouting. This is when I went to see the house. It allowed me to calculate when will the light be on this facade. Not everybody's gonna have the luxury of being there all day long, but maybe you can choose the best time of day for your apartment. You know, if it's an apartment that gets, like here, this room, we get light coming in in the morning. Do you want to photograph this in the afternoon when the sun's on the other side and this is totally gloomy and... No, you don't. You want to do it with that beautiful light streaking and probably even earlier so it really comes into the room. So here's the shot with the right light as far as I'm concerned. A few other examples, the patio, obviously bad light. Shot it with better light, shot it at twilight. The exterior, a lot of shadow on the pool. Again, this is just when I happened to be there for the scouting. I tried to plan it so the house was well lit. The pool didn't have as much shadow into it yet. By the way, when you use wide angles, pools can look overly large because you have to be on the other side of the pool looking at the house. People complain that the pools look Olympic when they're not. The only thing you can do to avoid that without going in tighter is to crop some of the pool off later. That's a good trick if your pool's are looking too big. Uh, the nighttime shot, again, when you do your twilights, this is what happens if you start too early. There's not a balance between the sky and the light of the building. It doesn't matter if there's 10 watts or a billion watts. I went to a wider lens so I could get more of the entry area, more space around it. Light's starting to get a little better, it's still wrong. This is starting to get better. So a little later than this, and by doing some HDR, I was able to get that effect. And you, and you removed the... Crane on the right. And we remove the crane on the right for the client. Exactly. <laughs> now, okay, very quickly on that sort of thing. I would not personally retouch anything that is going to be there when they get there. But if it's something like a crane that you can say, I took this picture before they started building that house or after they finished building that house or if it's a stain on the grass or something that's not permanent, I would feel free to retouch it. But I would not retouch things. I would not hide you know, electrical cables or something that are going to be there when they get there. I might avoid putting it in the shot, but I'm not gonna retouch them out. Very quickly, drones. This is the best I could do from the ground. This was from up in a crane with La Concha Mountain. Same thing, I couldn't go any further back on the ugly side of this house. Okay, this is not the main side, but when I went up in a crane, look at the difference we get. Now, of course, nowadays we're using drones. Again, what I could do on the ground. Crane is an entire, a drone is an entirely different story. Shows the location, the sea, the mountain. 
entirely, entirely different perspectives. Keep in mind, do a little drone photography. Uh, we're talking styling, but we've already discussed styling. I think we're out of time. Yeah, no, no. So I, maybe if you have a last uh, couple of points or uh, questions. Yeah, I, we, what I was going to show, we basically covered. So I'd rather open it up for questions, or if you want, I can show you some styling examples, but we've already seen some. So I'd rather open it up for questions and answers. Would you put people in pictures, or do you prefer? For rental properties. Yeah. It would definitely be a gimmick you could use to draw attention. I will say that it adds a huge amount of complexity to the shoot. Yeah. Photographing architecture is very different from photographing people. Oh, I didn't show you. Oh, there's one slide I do want to show you very quickly. I'm going to skip past these before and after things. I do want to show you one thing we haven't talked about at all because I've been concentrating on wide angles because they're the trickiest. Okay, these are styling examples before and after, but I want to get to this one. Detail shots. Yeah. You need, we thank God I remembered, Detail shots are really easy to take. They have a lot of magic, a lot of atmosphere. With your iPhone, even even if you're using a camera, I often with the iPhone will take a quick detail picture because alongside the wide angle shot, it completes the sensation of the house. So you have your wide angle daytime, your wide angle twilight, and your detail shots to really give a full picture. Uh, so back to people, it adds a lot of complexity. It's uh, oh, Unless you're doing it with an iPhone or something that kind of does everything for you, uh, you need to plan it, they're in the way when you don't want them, they're waiting while you're setting up your shots. Uh, the styling, their haircuts, their clothes can be wrong or go out of fashion quickly, but I think it's definitely a good gimmick that you could do. I would not recommend putting anyone close in wide angle shots because they will distort. Mm -hmm. If you have to do that, keep them to the center where there's minimal distortion. Mm -hmm. As soon as they start going off the edges, anybody who's been in a group picture and you're on the far edge, <laughs> didn't you feel like you were really fat? <laughs> right, that's why, distortion. If you're in the center, you're looking great. Okay, that's why, so the same thing happens there. Otherwise, don't use wide angle, make it a detail shot, or have them in the distance, anywhere, even on the edges, but in the distance, where the distortion doesn't affect so much. Can I, sorry, can I answer this one then? Yep. The people? Because at one conference we were talking about this as well, and they basically said, make it look like you're on holiday, but you've just stepped to what out of exactly. So That's where the style open is. with the towel yeah. on, on yeah. next to the pool. Yeah. Make it like someone was there, but they've stepped out, so yeah. you can come back in and step in as the guest. This yeah. is a little That's over the top, but that might be an example of it. For example, <laughs> this dining room shot. Mm. Okay, there's no one in it, but yeah. the chair is open in what they call a waiting position. Mm. The table is set. You can imagine yourself sitting yeah. down there. Uh, same with that. Again, some of these can be a little over the top for rental properties, but maybe like this kitchen shot. Okay, they're not gonna expect the loaf of bread and the flowers when they come necessarily, but they can imagine that they would be putting it there. Yeah. Okay, good point, thank you very much. Uh, there was more questions. Uh, for um, the 0 0.5, when it's fair to use it, like with the iPhone, you have to go quickly in one leg because the photographer couldn't go. Mm -hmm. uh, like, in what case would you use it? I, mean, I personally would, I'm, I'm extreme, I do it, I use everything, but I, I love extreme wide angles, but I really know how to handle them well. So if you don't know how to, I would always go to the furthest corner possible in a room. Sometimes you have good space, other times you have no space. And I would use the, the focal length that allows me to show what I want to show. In other words, maybe from wall to wall, or maybe even a bit less, because we don't need what's happening at the extremes. Uh, try to use the least wide angle lens possible to reduce distortion, but feel free to go to that extra wide now that you know not to tilt it up and down and to go center to center, because it will look pretty good. Did that, that answer the question? Yeah, yeah obviously yeah. then you have to edit a little bit, because it's not the same with one way to edit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's no way of getting, uh, some lenses are what they call rectilinear, which means that your straight lines stay straight, even though it's very wide angle and distorts. So you get spatial distortion, but your lines remain straight, which is basically what the iPhone does with software algorithms. It corrects the lines for you automatically. So you just have to deal with things that go off to the side, start stretching. Uh, social media. Oh, okay. Uh, I personally don't use filters for most of my architecture and real estate photography, I use it more for people, uh, moments, uh, events. But yeah, it could, I mean, what I use when I process most of the time is I'm processing like in a landscape mode for really strong, rich colors and contrast. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to imitate what films used to do. I used to choose the film, but like I say, a lot of rules and a lot of rules to be broken and play with it. Anything that makes you stand out and be different is gonna help you get a return on investment.
Thank you very much. Wow. Uh, wow. It was already short to start with, but I'm um, okay. But you were great, grace under pressure, so I appreciate that. Fantastic. Well, we spent three days trying to get the videos to upload, and I came an hour early to make sure it was working, and of course it didn't. So. Yeah, I think the internet let us down entirely, right. but you, you handled it well. Appreciate right. it.